Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up just a basic setup just to quickly go over Betaflight how I would go about doing my, uh, my builds here and it's just going to be very quick and simple um, and restart. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing the beta flight configuration of my builds. How I go about doing it and what is the easiest way that I've found. And it's just a quick basic one. No pid tuning, nothing. Just setting it up, playing with the rates, and checking the orientation. All that kind of good stuff. So after you build it, what I usually do is... Uh, I do something different, but this is the easier way. So I'm going to show you guys the easy way. Plug in, plug in the USB and have it facing away from you and make sure the propellers are off because we're going to be needing to install the um, the battery here soon to actually check the motor orientation and to check all that kind of good stuff. Um, however, be, before doing all that, uh, we need to make sure your receiver is actually bound and you're 100% you're sure it's bound. So that, that's one step that you should be you should do on your own and it should be pretty simple. There's a lot of videos out there that shows you how to do that. So let's get started. First, what you wanna do is you wanna open Betaflight and have your quad connected. So let's do that now. Okay, and there we go. So we're gonna connect here and make sure the quad is facing away from you. Uh, and you'll see why right now. So make sure the quads head just facing away from you. And then we're going to connect here. And on this page right here, what I usually do is I start with calibrate, just to calibrate the accelerometer. If my quad is laying on a flat for surface and I believe it's pretty flat, then go ahead and do that. If not, then just leave it for now. Now what I do is I grab it from the back and I lift it up. And as you can see the arrow there, see that? So if I lift up the front, that's correct then. Then I have the board orientation is absolutely correct. Now let's try to make it move to the right, see? And on the virtual little uh, picture of the drone, it's actually moving to the right. And on the left, it's moving to the left. And if we move it forward, that's forward. That's perfect. So now we know the board orientation is correct. And if it's not correct, then we would have to go here. We would have to go to configuration. And we have the yaw degree alignment and um, just keep playing with that until you get it right um, let's just say your arrows pointing to the right then what you would want to do is actually set it to yaw degrees 90 so this would be 90 and I have a video on the motor orientation I've done a while ago so I'll leave a link to that down in the description below I go into detail about this and how to find the numbers and stuff so that would be right there and for ESCs, this is where you would choose your protocol. I'm pretty sure a lot of people know that now. Uh, usually I set a D-Shot 600 if I know if my ESCs are capable of D-Shot 600. If not, uh, sometimes I can get away with D-Shot 150 and D-Shot 300. Uh, just be careful when playing with these. Sometimes you can have the basically quad turn to the right and go full throttle and probably cut your head off. So just be careful with this here. Uh, motor stop. Try not to ever use this. Because you won't know if your, your quad is on because the, 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 the propellers aren't spinning. And let's just say you went down to pick it up and you touch the throttle. That's it. You're, you're basically, you cut your fingers off. I mean, it could be, you could probably cut your whole hand off. So this is not a joke. So keep that off right there. So when you know when it's armed, it'll start spinning. And this is the motor idle throttle value. This is the value which says when the, when the quad is armed, uh, what is the minimum uh, it'll always be spinning at that speed. And this is 4.5%. I usually like 7%, but here I kept it and I'm actually going to change 7%. That's just, it's just, it's a preference thing. For me, I prefer 7 for some reason and I just keep it that way. So after that, you'd want to save and reboot. I'm just, I don't know why that's negative 20. And we're going to save and reboot here. And then reconnect. Now, let's go to the next step. Here we have the gyro update frequency and the PID loop frequency. Um, see, as you can see right now, we can go to maximum of 8, 8K, 8K. And if you wanted more, you would enable this option. It gives you plenty more. However, you know, I for me, I see there is no need. For 8K, 8K is the maximum I would run. And right now, when I did it, it was just default 8K, 4K. And I found it flying perfect, so I'm not even going to touch it. I'm just going to leave it the way it is, and it's just going to be absolutely perfect. So that's just a personal preference. Uh, you know, I, a lot of people would agree with me. 8K, 8K is more than enough. There's no need for more. Even 8K, 4K is just perfect, really. Um, now, 
here's the craft name you know on your osd if you wanted the name of the quadcopter you're flying to show up that's where this is where you would edit that now let's go down here so this is receiver now now like i said before make sure your receiver is bound and um make sure you have it connected to the correct s bus port on your flight controller you can check the documentation however sometimes you could find the s bus pad but you won't know what uh uart it's on so that'll make it things more difficult however there's a very simple way to do it and i do it even if there's documentation but i'm just too lazy to go search it what i do is let's just say right now i set this to s bus right here so if you can't find s bus then you need to click on the top one because it would be like this ppm see see how the other part disappears so you want serial based receiver and then s bus for using s bus i'm using i bus here same thing really so that would be set there you would save and reboot and then what you'd want to do is some flight controllers do provide power to the receiver just through usb and some don't currently this one does not so we're going to have to install the battery and the battery when you install the battery make sure your propellers are off because one single short could actually just really just cut you up just it could probably slit your neck it's not even a joke guys i've had shorts that uh, i could not stop the quad i never ever arm in the house no matter how tempting it is or hover you guys have no idea what they're capable of it's it's not a joke one time i had the emacs 2750 kv motors go full throttle in the house under the table and i was right next to it um i, I would have been dead i'm not i'm not even joking so uh, for some reason it just basically shorted out rebooted after it went full throttle and just went crazy and i just quickly just stepped on it and took out the battery it's, it's not a joke all right so sorry about that let's move on all right so now what we did is i've already installed the um the battery so we can actually test the receiver so let's just quickly go back to what we did so we said let's just say s bus here and now we need to figure out if our serial ports are working but there's no documentation what i do is i would start with one by one make sure all these are off and just have one on so i'll start with uart one i would save it and and then make sure your controller is on also and then i would reconnect and go to the receivers tab i don't see any movement then okay i would go back to ports I would disable this, enable the next one, save and reboot, and then connect again, receiver, nothing, I'm not getting any kind of movement here, so what I would do again is I would go to ports, disable this one, enable this one, save and reboot, and connect again, and go to receivers again, oh, and now we have... Um, now we now it's working so that's it we're here we're done with the receiver that should be totally fine however you guys need to know something if for some reason you're using ibus and on the s bus port it's not working just change it to a different uart that's what i have to do on this one for some reason the s bus port does not work on ibus i don't know why i didn't want to debug it so i just found another open port and i just stuck it on there and everything is totally fine so now we want to go to modes so once it's connected we would want to go to modes and let's just say you don't know which auxiliary is what auxiliary so let's just remove these actually okay so we're gonna say arm so this would be arm so what I would do is now you could actually start playing with the con with the button that does that what you want actually to arm your quad so it's a bit different on uh, the Tyrannus I'll have a video on that later on but I'm pretty sure there's a lot of good ones out there that show you how to assign auxiliaries uh, so that'll be a different video but this is assuming that you're to do you already know how to do that so now what you want to do is actually is Okay, and I don't know, that's not supposed to be on auxiliary one. Oh yeah, it's because I didn't save. Okay, hold on. Okay, just give it a moment. You see how dangerous this is? Uh, it's not a joke, if I had propellers on right now, I couldn't have controlled it. So right now, I'm playing with the button that I want to arm my quad, and I don't see any kind of movement. You want to see this, this yellow dot right here move. So we're going to go to auxiliary two. There is nothing, auxiliary three. Now we have something. Oh, but it's not arming. Why isn't it not arming? Well, it's because we have to save. So we would save now. And we would, there we go, it's arming. Now we do the same thing for, uh, let's just say angle mode. You wanted angle mode for some reason. Um, I usually put angle mode just in case if I get into something or there's a bug around me, I just drop it in angle mode, give it some throttle, make sure it's kind of somewhere safe in the air. So that, that's why I keep it. Um, so I put it auxiliary four. It's the next one, but you would start also with one, and then you would want to skip whatever was for arm or however you want it. So I know it's four here, 
and as you can see it, the yellow dot is actually moving so that's good for us and you just set angle mode now if this yellow dot goes here and there's nothing else that means it's acro mode which is um you know um acro mode rate mode the one that doesn't automatically self level so that's the one we want and that's how i have it set here so if it passes this point then sorry it's an acro mode now what we want to do is just save again and we should be good here so now what we want to do is actually want to go to the motors tab so just to double check our motors are correct and again make sure the quad is facing away from you because you could follow this diagram right here so as you can see this is motor one so first you want to check if the motors are correct so motor one let's see if motor one spins okay so this was motor one on the picture and let's just double check it yep it's spinning motor two is this one on the picture that top one let's see if it's spinning good motor three is this back left one that's good motor four perfect so they're all spinning good now we need to check the orientation that they're spinning so we would go back to motor one but you could have done this in the first one actually um so we would just want to make it spin nice and easy and what i like to do is i just put my finger and see where it spins my finger so that's spinning correctly as the picture is showing and let's just do motor two for another example so there we go and then just see where it's spinning my finger it's spinning my finger that way and the arrow is pointing that way so that's perfect so you want to do this for all four motors and you're done so make sure here we turn it off and i think that's really it yeah that's really it right now uh and here's some rc rates what everyone's talking about and it would kind of be it's kind of a bit confusing sometimes if you don't know what it is so you can see this oh, let me turn off this thing off okay all right so you can see this graph and now i'm just yawing to the left and right here and basically here it's just all smooth sailing but once you get past this point it basically doubles the spin rate right there okay so what how do you change these well this is the rc rate the rc rate is within this first square right here so this will determine how sensitive it is on the inner part of your movements so let me just show you how that would look like um so that would be just if you were to move it just like that you know just like that and the super rate is when you full deflection you see how far it jumps right there as you can see the picture on top of my controller so it would be right here this is the regular rate and then this is the super rate right there so i like my super rate very very fast however if you have it too high sometimes like 1600 degrees now some people say these degrees don't really actually tell you how fast you're spinning but it just makes it very fast so 1600 is very fast and it's once it pops back into place it's spinning so fast that you'll get oscillations because the pids um, cannot even handle that spin when, when you just stop from spinning so fast. So you'd want to just keep it like, I, I, I like it at like around 1200, which is 0 0.83, 0 0.83 here, and then usually 1.03. I like that because when I just go like this for like a second basically, that that's a full roll for me so this is how i go about it so for, uh, just it's just a feeling thing you know but i believe this is a good good thing to start off with i mean if you play call of duty and and all that kind of stuff like ps4 so th th that's how i find it for me so the battery's been on for too long all right and what else do we have here everything else is a little bit more advanced and we could cover that later on but basically that is really it i mean it's just that simple and uh, that's it so um, I really hope you guys enjoyed it and if you guys have any questions or any suggestions feel free to let me know and I apologize for the beginning of the video the audio was terrible possibly um, but I'm trying to fix that now and that's it guys so if you guys found it useful let me know if you guys want more of this stuff let me know uh, maybe the next one will be the BL Heli 32 and some BL Heli S uh, ASC setup and updates and all that kind of crazy stuff and that's it guys so i will see you next time and don't forget to use my affiliate links it really helps the channel it helps it grow i can keep bringing more stuff and good stuff for us to test and, and all that kind of crazy stuff and that's it guys so see ya take care happy flying